Tremendous work. So, Barbara, how do you feel? Well, I would like to know how the people who haven't seen it feel. And because uh, nobody has seen this film at all. And you can speak in whatever order you, know, you want. I am I'm I'm all absolutely inspired and thankful. You know, it's kind of spooky to see yourself on TV. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting thing, you know, you're sitting there cuz you're your biggest self-critic. Uh, but Barbara, let me just say, I think on behalf of all of us, a warm thanks to you and your team for the incredibly talented, creative genius that you are. Thank you, Barbara, so very much. We love you, Mark. And, uh, it was a pleasure. I think we also want to thank uh, the Sellers Easton team and all of the producers, uh, because it really began with them. It was their idea. Yes, uh, it was. To have this... Uh, uh, this vision uh, for Janet and I, and, and, and so I want to thank all of them and my team at the National Urban League, Rhonda Spears, Bell et al., who supported this effort. Uh, I appreciate you all. Yeah. But uh, Janet, thank you. you. You are so powerful. You're so beautiful. You're so passionate. <laughs> uh, it was great uh, to just see a little bit more about your incredible family uh, and, uh, and your incredible work and your incredible journey. So... I just want to throw out thanks and to, to just to Rose and, and to Jamie and, uh, and, and everyone else who appeared a warm, warm appreciation and thanks because you all are the warriors. You I'd all also are truly, like to truly say, the warriors, so thank you. I'd also like to say that a lot of people traveled a long way to be here. Yeah, yeah. And all the way I'd from love St. them. Louis. Yes, all the way from St. Louis and Kansas and many places. So Texas. if they would stand up, please show us your and, faces. Uh, show us who you are. Mark, from I'd Houston, Texas. And I'm just going to do one Don't other thing. Don't be shy. I wanna, stand up. I please. Wanna, Barbara, especially single eyed Michael McMillan, there he is. the yeah. president. Where's Michael? Stand up, Michael, Michael. the president the of the Greater Metropolitan St. Louis Urban League. Yep. Uh, because Save Our Sons, the Ferguson Empowerment Center, really is his vision. Uh, and, and that came to life. So thank you, Michael, for thank your you. leadership. Thank you, Barbara. I just want to say uh, thank you. Uh, gracias from the bottom of my heart. You're a masterful. Um, storyteller and when you see it all come together it's it's a powerful and compelling uh, vision and story but you know this took years and years and behind the scenes and and a lot of knitting together of the stories that when you see them up there seem sort of natural as they come together but this took a lot of time, dedication, and effort. And I also want to thank Barbara and her team, the Sellers Easton team. But also, you saw many of the stories. And really, the power in those stories was the courage of the people who were represented, the compassion of the people like Rose and the Escobar family, and so many of the, so many of the folks who support Unidos US, we have an affiliate network full of people and leaders at the Unidos US uh, uh, organization that, that lift up and help folks and families like the Escobars every day. And those affiliates are all over the country, leaders all over the country, of course, my Unidos US team, uh, and in particular, a shout out to Octavio Espinal Yay. and yeah. Lisa Navarrete, who really have been yes. really wonderful. But thank you all. Wonderful. How are you, Rose? <laughs> you know, living it is one thing. Um, seeing it in the screen, wow. It brought so many memories back. And my daughter, who is sitting right there, she started crying. <laughs> Um, as many of you can see, she went mute when it all happened, and she doesn't she doesn't remember. So when she saw it, she started crying. She's like, "I went mute." And I said, "Yes, honey, you did, but you found your voice, and Daddy's home now, so we're okay." Well, I just think this was an overwhelming emotional roller coaster. It was a very uh, a wonderful 
experience for me to be here among all these great people. Uh, I give all the credit and glory to God. I want to thank Mr. Michael McMillan, as Mr. Muriel said. Uh, he's actually the impervious leader and visionaire behind the Save Our Sons program. And I'm so glad that these gentlemen that have been incarcerated for so much of their lives and missed out on what it means to be in America, to be able to get a real look and you can see that human side of them. So this was a wonderful experience. It took over three years to make. And just to sit here, I'm just overwhelmed. I want to uh, send a shout out to my wife, Sandra, back there. <laughs> and, and and most of all, I'm I'm honored to be here because I am the legacy of Martin Luther Matthews, who worked at Matthews Sticky Boys and Girls Club in St. Louis, and I grew up around great men because it takes a man, you know, to shape a young man into a better man. So this really meant a lot to me. I'm just glad to be here. Thanks, Shane. Oh, you are wonderful. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Bradley Cobb, and I'm the fat dude that was on the screen. Uh, Jesus. Uh, anyway, so it's always weird you see yourself. You're all fat, now you lost a couple pounds. Anyway, so I'm a comic now, uh, and, and I'm just glad that I was with the Urban League, with uh, Mr. McMillan and uh, Brother Dennis. First of all, Brother Dennis, y'all don't even understand. This dude is like a... He's like a St. Louis like Batman for real. Like he is just like an underground hero. And I, I'm just blessed that I was able to work with him. Mr. McMillan, who's a godsend, Mr. Moriel, his 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 vision and, and the fight you have with you still, you know, most people they get kind of, you know, comfortable. You you're not comfortable. <laughs> and you know, uh, and it's people like them who've led me to pursue a career in comedy and entertainment and doing what I'm doing and being able to travel doing that as opposed to traveling on the bus going to jail, you know. So, I really appreciate that and I thank you so much and I love all of you. Barbara, thank you. Love you thank too. You. Ray. It's wonderful. I just also want to thank um Mark is a very special leader, as was reflected in the screen. Uh, someone who is very generous in mentoring and sharing his experiences in a way where we find common ground. Mm -hmm. And to see, for me, uh, someone in the African-American community coming together with someone in the Latino community at this particular moment in time, I hope sets an example for others. It's not easy. There's more to be done, but hopefully this gives a glimpse into the potential to reveal that in unity there is strength and in strength there is power. And so, Mark, I really want to thank you thank for you. your leadership and your commitment to unity. And uh, I hope we can see more of that. I just want to also just say to my family, you know, you are who who helped create me. I mean, obviously, Barbara was very industrious, but to find that film of my parents in the Oval Office yeah. with President Clinton, funny. both my parents have passed away, mm. but they set the foundation of values and of love for this country that is something that I still try to live up to. And I just want to thank my husband, Mauro, and my brother and sisters, uh, but in particular, Ramon, my brother, who's here, who graduated from Harvard, and my sister, Mary, who's broken ground as the first Latina, as a U.S. federal district court judge, and now sits on the U.S. Court, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. So I just want to thank you all. Boy, I tell you, your mom and daddy raised some bad children. I mean, they, you all are so, so accomplished, and uh, it, it, it really motivates me and moves me to see uh, from those humble upbringings, mm -hmm. uh, the accomplishments, but the continued commitment and humility, uh, it's special, Janet, and it's, it's been a, a great part of this. And I want to acknowledge my uh, family members who are here, uh, my wife, Michelle Miller, uh, Mason and Margot, who are in the film uh, for their, uh, their tolerance of me and uh, for putting up with me and for laughing at my not-so-funny jokes. <laughs> Uh, I'm in deeply indebted. My mom could not be here. Uh, my mom uh, celebrates her 90th birthday this year wow. and uh, just took a trip to Las Vegas uh, where the International Women's Forum honored her uh, with one of its highest awards. So she could not be here, but she says, when am I going to see it? When am I going to see it? I say, when we get distribution, mom. <laughs> 
But I want to say one thing about this concept. Where did this, I, this notion of gumbo and gumbo coalition really, really come from? It wasn't a PR firm. It wasn't an intentional. It was almost a happenstance kind of a thing. Uh, when I ran for mayor in 1993 and 94 in New Orleans, I think there were 11 people running in the open primary system. And in an open primary system, you know, everyone runs, whether they are Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, know nothing or do nothing. Uh, and everyone runs, and the top two vote getters proceed into a runoff election if no one gets more than 50 percent of the vote. Uh, so obviously, it creates the need to build a lot of coalitions, some of them logical, some of them illogical. Uh, but along the way, uh, one of the ways you campaign uh, for office, and particularly in New Orleans, is you go into people's homes, they invite 20, 30, 40, 50, 75, 100 of their friends, and these homes could be anywhere from a stately mansion uh, to a public housing apartment. Uh, and it's New Orleans, so at every party, what do you have? You have food. Uh, and at every party, food in New Orleans means gumbo. Uh, and at one of these events, I was, uh, you know, you're always searching uh, when you have to give remarks something new, something clever, something to talk about. And I was at a, an event in, in the Broadmoor section, which is an extremely diverse section. I looked out and the crowd was probably, you know, it was black, it was white, uh, there were Latinos and Asians. Uh, there were some uh, leaders in the LGBTQ community at the time. Uh, and the host was serving gumbo. So somehow I said, uh, you know, this crowd reminds me of that gumbo. There's a little of this, and a little of that. And when we put it all together, the more we add, the better it gets and the stronger it gets. And someone in the crowd yelled, this is the gumbo coalition. And from there, the terminology stuck. And the concept, and this, what this film is really all about, is what is gonna be required in the future of the nation. And that is coalition building. Coalition building in leadership, coalition building in politics, coalition building to bring uh, different peoples together. And we're trying to do it amongst blacks and Latinos because there are many, many forces in this country that want to create some sort of pitched competition uh, between black and Latino communities. The truth is uh, we have so much in common. The truth is uh, our struggles intersect. The truth is, is that together we have so much power. And what we're trying to demonstrate in a broader sense uh, is that, yes, you can have some disagreements. You know, I'm going to have people panning me for shaking Jared Kushner's hand, right? And I said at the time, hey, look, Cory Booker, Van Jones, several of us said, hey, you know what? We've been talking about this criminal justice reform for years and years and years, and we've been running in place. So we have an opportunity, maybe with an odd political coalition to do it, let's take the win. Let's take the win and put people first. And so sometimes in coalition building, you find common ground, not comprehensively, but sometimes narrowly in order to accomplish something. And that's what we essentially did. And the well, film Mark, embraces that. Mark, you would not go to the White House. No. He came to you. And also you said later on, you know, you have to talk to both sides, talk. even if you don't agree with them. And you did exactly what was right, and that was what your father taught you to do, and that was very important for us to put that in. Thank you. Yeah. What is your next move for the coalition? You say you're going to keep fighting, so what is your next move? So there's some unfinished business. So unfinished business is the passage of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Bill. Uh, and it is essential, and it is not anti-police. What it is is pro-accountability. Uh, and it is supported by responsible law enforcement organizations, uh, responsible police officers. Uh, and, and that is one thing we have to do. Secondly, we have got to adopt uh, a, a new Voting Rights Act, the John Lewis Voting Rights Bill didn't make it because it was blocked by, once again, the filibuster. And I know Janet can speak more eloquently, uh, but we have got to address 
uh, immigration reform. So there's some big ticket items. Some people see these items as being divisive. I see them as going right to the heart of how to make the nation a great nation for everyone. And we have to stick to that while politicians may be divided. Each of these issues, whether it's immigration reform, the George Floyd bill, or the voting rights uh, John Lewis bill, they poll almost 65, 70 percent. Uh, they have broad support amongst the American people. So we gotta, we're going we're gonna to work on that, but we've got to continue to organize. Uh, I'm going to be uh, going down to the great state of Georgia, the Peach State, uh, to make sure people get out on December the 6th. Uh, one yeah, we more need that. time. We want to keep the Senate. And we're still counting votes in Nevada and keeping our fingers crossed. Yes. Um, I would just say, uh, you know, look, we have policing reform still, voting rights. But Mark's right for us, and you saw this, the humanity in the story of the Escobar family, that we still have hundreds of thousands, millions of families that are impacted by the failure of this country to enact comprehensive immigration reform. There's six million U.S. citizen children who have at least one parent who is undocumented and live in fear that their parents could, and their families could still be separated from them. It's really inhumane and unjust. And so we do need all of us to come together for these kinds of changes that we know live up to the vision of the America we know we can be and we should be. But we have to stay engaged every day, not just on election day, of course on election day, but every day, our voices have to be heard. And whether it's through institutions like the National Urban League or Unidos US, there's some way each of us can play a part and keep engaged every day. And we're gonna take this Save Our Sons program and we wanna bring it to every town, every village, every hamlet, every city. Uh, uh, and, 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 and the other thing I think we're going to continue to work together to build, continue to coalition build. You know, coalition building, uh, I learned in local politics uh, in a city like New Orleans, which is an incredibly, it's diverse and then there's diversity within diversity. People may look at a black community and think it's monolithic and unified. No way, baby. Uh, they may look at the Latino community and say it's monolithic. No way, baby. I mean, you know, you have to coalition build in a lot of interesting ways within communities and then amongst communities and to knit communities together because we're a diverse nation in many ways. We're an opinionated nation in, in, in many ways. And we have to continue to do that kind of work, notwithstanding the noise uh, in the public square and, and, and the true... Uh, fractures in the country. So we're going to continue to try to be a constructive force for that. We have a lot in common. And one demographic note that a lot of people still haven't kind of clued into is that 25% of the Latino community identifies as Afro-Latino. We don't just empathize with the African-American community. We identify with the African-American community. And it is something that I think inspires us in many ways to think and say, tu lucha es mi lucha. Your fight is our fight. And the more that we can understand that we have a lot in common, uh, and that is changing demographically every day as well, that I think we need, it's not a luxury for us to work together, it is an imperative for us to be working together. Yeah, we, we do. We have to work together. We have to push against the grain and, uh, and, and work very hard to find common ground. And not, look, we're not naive about uh, the battles we have to fight. We're not, we're not naive about the fact that regrettably, and, and my mother reminds me of this constantly because she grew up uh, in segregation. She was there in the 50s and 60s. And I listened to the horror and the outrage in a voice uh, at the, uh, the, the, the hate chambers and the hate echo and the hate crimes uh, that have, uh, have cropped up. And so we're not 
unmindful of the fact that we have to continue to battle this. But I just think the forces of goodwill, the people of goodwill, the people who want the country to progress, who understand the path forward who's not easy, that demo democracy, participatory democracy is foundational, that there's a difference between freedom of speech and hate crimes, and a difference between responsible speech and fabrications, conspiracy theories, and lying. Right? There's a difference uh, between the two. And we have to indeed continue to work and promote that. So, you know, Barbara, the Sellers Easton team, you know, we're also open to whatever the next big project is. You know, we, we want to get this. Oh, don't say <laughs> that. <laughs> Can you take another four years <laughs> of us? <laughs> we, we, we have now become uh, acclimated and accustomed to it, right? <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Maddie, Ma Ma is Maddie back there? No? Oh, just, we have time for one more? Uh, one more question. One last question. All right. Okay. You won my heart right there. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very and, uh, much. I, I want to, I want to, end. yeah. And I want to add to that, that, you know, all five of you are amazing characters. You all touched me so much with sharing your stories, and I so appreciate you being here today. And Barbara, you're the captain of this ship. Thank you so much for, for making this film. It's really a Thanks, gift. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. I had a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. It Thank was you an all. Honor.